So last week we interviewed Dr. Jim Garrow, who is this uh, Canadian American guy who claims that he at one point worked for one of the alphabet agencies of the U.S. He wouldn't tell us whether it was the FBI or the CIA. He also said that President Obama tried to kill him and he had a really specific story about how and the, his vehicle and holes that were drilled. If you missed that interview, check it out. But in response to that interview, I received a ton of emails saying, have you, you know, that the way I handled it did not argue with any of his points and that that was interesting because typically I would do that. And that's absolutely right, because if he believes that President Obama had holes strategically drilled into his car to hopefully cause it to seize and go <laughs> end over end, which, by the way, a ton of car mechanics wrote in and said is physically impossible, that I'm not going to be able to change his mind. And have there been other interviews where I took that same approach? There is one where I did, and it was with a man called David Wynn Miller. David Wynn Miller is a guy who is quite well known in many circles for uh, number one, claiming that the government controls people through the usage of grammar. And number two, he claims to be able to teach people how to use grammar properly to not have to pay taxes and to do other stuff. Now, it never works. Every single person that has tried to use his technology, as he describes it, has either lost their court case or even sometimes been sanctioned by by judges for for just spouting nonsense in that interview. I couldn't really argue against him saying that he's the king of Hawaii and that uh, he he once was able to uh, break the math language interface. Anyway, that is the interview we're going to play for you today. This is a classic interview. It is equally bizarre when we look at the Dr. Jim Garrow interview. I hope you enjoy this. Send me your thoughts on this one and I'll tell you a little bit about the aftermath after we watch the video. Tell me about how you first started uh, your theories and research into s correct language and uh, control of the gov government via grammar and language, which is something I've done a lot of research on in the last 24 hours. All right. Back in 1980, I went through a divorce. And in that divorce, the judge said that uh, men cannot nurture children and therefore denied me my parental rights. I sued that judge for uh, discrimination under the 1964 Civil Rights Act and had him disbarred. Um, I then went back to court 65 consecutive times in front of Judge Wazalewski. I said to him, oh, what you're asking me then is to find a mathematical interface between language and math. He says, well, in 8,500 years, no one's ever been able to prove that. And he says, and if you can prove it, he says, I'll give you your kids back. So I spent three years, and on April 6, 1988, I broke the math interface and proving uh, that all, all language, or I should say all grammar on all 5,000 languages that a linear equation in algebra. And with that, I uh, got my kids back. So and I've had equal shared parenting. And part of this correct language, like, for example, it includes the use of hyphens and colons in people's names, right? So you've added at least one, maybe even a couple of colons to your name. How, how, explain to me how that frees one from control by the government. All right. When you look at your wristwatch, it's digital. You have colons in your time. Why do you have colons in your time? For the 30 minutes of the of the or right now it's for the six minutes of the first hour hmm. so using prepositional phrases to certify the value of of time because it's a fact so i said well my name is a fact i'm not an adjective pronoun if i said david win miller david is an adjective win is an adjective and miller is a pronoun well an adjective is a modifier i have to so interrupt here does uh, this does make That's does not make that. any sense to me here. This makes absolutely no sense. Does does this make sense to you? In honest, honestly, this makes sense to you. It's called grammar. It's called syntax. Parse syntax grammar. Yeah, and but now sometimes you've attempted to help people, and when people have attempted to use this language in court, they've all lost their court cases. And haven't some people even been sent to jail for for starting to to use this language in court? I mean, is there any instance where well, you can, uh, 
the case that you're referring to, the people filed a lawsuit in Wisconsin with a heading from Missouri. To, no, I'm not because, just talking about that. I mean, October of 01, Andrew Williams Serrata in Calgary, Alberta. And then we have Stephen Allen Margaret's in, in Wisconsin. And then we have uh, Jason Zelmer. I mean, there's just so many people, Ed Dick and Brenda Rickard. I mean, she was ordered to have a psychological evaluation for using this colon and hyphen stuff. Okay, when you're when you're correct in a in a courtroom that tells lies, the liar has to protect themselves. If they don't lie together, they'll all lay together. Gotcha. And so the judge had to cover up his ability to his his perjury in the court by ordering the individual into psychological evaluation. So it was a taking him out of the jurisdiction of the court to cover up his lie. And explain to me when you prove that Hawaii is a verb. Uh, tell me about that. Well, it's the state of Hawaii. Any any time you state as a pronoun, of as an adverb, modifies the verb Hawaii. Okay, that sounds. It's it called sounds... grammar. It's called syntax grammar. I mean, and why doesn't do anybody? About... Why doesn't anyone else know or use this grammar? I mean, is this part of the government control? Well, when you've told lies for eighty five hundred years, what is your first position? You want to protect your lie, otherwise you'll be embarrassed. But if and eighty, hold on a second, though, David. 8,500 8, years, but you're citing something from the 80s, and this country hasn't been around nearly that long. I don't, what, who has been Does lying? It, uh, hey, we came from English. I disqualified that Magna Carta in 2001 when I sent text that okay. Queen Elizabeth sold, sold it at Christie's of London for $6.7 million two weeks later. Last week, Monday, Queen Elizabeth announced that England, Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa do not have constitutions because when I syntaxed them and posted them on the internet, she realized that the the, the parse syntax grammar on the constitutions is modified and says nothing. So what does it mean? What does it mean to syntax something on the internet? And tell me. When you teach people about this, for example, I read that it's six, a six-day training is about $1,400. What do people get for that amount of money? The seminars I put on, I do on Skype. Skype is the Internet, and that's free to everybody. Yeah, I get that. But what I'm saying is, do, do you char ever charge people to teach them this correct language? When I, when I do my... Uh, seminars in the United States, they are advertised publicly. They are advertised publicly, but my question is, do you ever charge people to teach them how to use colons to get out of tax evasion and stuff like that? I don't teach tax evasion. I teach people to use the correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar to pay their taxes. Okay, and so, but, so people do pay you to teach them that. Is that fair to say? People make donations. Okay, and, fair enough. Uh, it's it's open source. I give my website is open source for free. I I'll ask answer anybody's questions. And can you address this statement? There's an allegation where some say you claim to be the king of Hawaii. Can you address that? Yes, in 1997, uh, the Hawaiian well actually it was in 1995. The Hawaiian Kapunas came to me after they learned that I had broke the math interface on language. There were uh, no rules or regulations or closure for using their name as a nom de guerre dead person. Now, if you're dead as a Hawaiian for 20 years on paper, your land is free for settlement. So the United States government, this law was made in 1849 by uh, King Kamea, because they created this illusion on August 25th, 19, it started in 1919, and by August 25th, 1959, Eisenhower, President Eisenhower stood up and said, all Hawaiians are dead, we know. Can I be completely and honest with you, David? Me. David, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can I be completely honest with you? I don't know that you believe all this stuff. I think that you have figured, you're kind of maybe an anarchist, you, and I think that, that this is shtick. I really do. I don't know that you believe all this stuff. I've been at this 32 years. Yeah. And I've been world certified. Uh, the United States Supreme Court uh, has ruled in my favor on these on these issues. All nine Supreme Court judges uh, agreed with me on this technology, and I work closely with them to teach them how to use this technology. See, they a, deny that. The, 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 there is, outside of your claim, 
there's no evidence that this, anybody, yet you're, you know anybody at the Supreme Court and that, that you have taught them any of this stuff. Well, you're, you can call John Roberts up and you can ask him. All right, well, I will try. Hey, real quick, last thing here. Uh, Jared Lee Loeffner, the Arizona shooter, mentioned Don't some of the— Don't know anything about the man. Uh, I understand. Never he, heard his name before when I accept on the TV. I, I understand. Um, so I know that you have, you have claimed that, if anything, he may have looked at your website at some point. What did you think? He has what, only a third-grade reading level. My website is written in a 28 reading level. There's no way he would comprehend it. But it, it, so you're saying that Jared Lee Loeffner, even though he he claimed that he was concerned with government control via grammar, his reading level is not such that he would even be able to have read your website. The man's crazy. Everybody knows that. Nobody would do something like that. You were absolutely crazy. His house was full of cartoons and The Wizard of Oz and and Alice in Wonderland and and he, he plays Halo. Uh, he combat games. He's got over 100 TV shows a week to brainwash him and how to kill people on television issued by your networks. So, you know, TV is the one that's brainwashing people how to kill people. My technology teaches people how to use grammar in its correct format. All right. David Wynn Miller, there it is. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so after this happened, he sent an email saying that he felt I was unprepared to really talk about his technology, which is correct sentence structure, parse syntax grammar. I wasn't ready, he felt, to, to really talk about that. Um, we tried to get him back on the program a couple of times to talk about his technology further and, and how he taught it to the Supreme Court justices, even though they seem completely unaware of that. And he has uh, he hasn't refused to come on. He just keeps saying he'll email us when he's either back in the country or ready to schedule something. I would love to have David Win Miller back on the program. That's all I have to say. And uh, uh, truly a classic interview. This is one of the ones that internally we look back at and say uh, that was crazy.